Hi folks, it's Andrew here, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about this project that I did a little while ago. This is called D-Supply. It's a little Eurorack power supply that makes plus and minus 12 volts. And uh, it was basically designed as a super simple, low-cost power supply that gave great performance. And I just want to tell you a little bit about how it works. Basically, uh, the reason I started this project is because I'd built a few different types of Eurorack power supplies in the past and uh, they were either too complicated, too expensive, uh, etc. I can show you one of the other ones. This is uh, my previous design. It's really good. Uh, I use it in my own system. I have four of these in four rows of Eurorack modules. Um, and I really like it, but it's a bit too expensive, especially if you're making it as part of a product, uh, like a, an enclosure that includes a power supply. This module here is about $35 or $40, and that's just too expensive. Um, so I kept working on little designs here and there in my spare time, and I finally uh, came up with this one. And uh, basically this does plus 12 volts at 1 amp and minus 12 volts at 500 milliamps and uh, basically it's just designed to be pretty easy to build it's mostly all through hole components and um, pretty small and simple and so anyway I just want to give you a little uh, run through about some of the technology inside and how it works okay here's the circuit for D supply there's two sections there's a plus 12 uh, regulator up here and there's a minus 12 regulator down here. They're both fed from the same input. There's a DC jack here with a switch and there's some terminals here so if you have multiple boards in the same enclosure you can daisy chain them with little wire jumpers instead of needing multiple power supplies and power switches. Um, each section is essentially the same. Each section has an input diode that protects it uh, against reverse polarity the reason I use two diodes is because they're smaller that way and I can use the same diodes over here or the diode I guess I should say over here. Um, the, the voltage comes in here the input is 15 to 18 volts uh, this is the positive supply for the switcher this switcher is a linear technologies LTC 1624 switching controller um, there's basically a power MOSFET here that's controlled by this chip. There's an indu inductor for the output. This is the output uh, filter inductor. That's the sort of main part of the switching uh, supply. And some output filtering here. That's to smooth the output voltage. And uh, there's a flyback diode here. And some compensation components over here. And feedback. So essentially the way this kind of a circuit works is the switching controller does all the magical business of controlling what's going on. Basically we want the output here to be 12 volts as stable as possible um, ac accounting for different uh, amounts of current being drawn out of here. Um, so what happens is let's say we've got 12 volts here we use these resistors to divide that voltage down this is a, just a st normal resistor divider divides that voltage down to a small voltage I think in this case it's 1.2 volts that gets put into the feedback pin here. Basically the feedback pin is used to determine whether or not this will switch more or less um, in terms of the length of the pulses that are going into this inductor. The frequency of the switching is the same all the time, it's 200 kilohertz in this case and basically by measuring the feedback pin this chip adjusts the duty cycle of the on and off pulses on this FET let's say it's 15 volts input, the 15 volt uh, supply will come right in here and when it's on 15 volts is applied to this uh, inductor the current starts to flow through here into the output, the output would just rise just a little bit this is, this is keeping track of the voltage on the output and then it will turn off when it turns off there's nothing connected to the end of here, let's say this, this guy has gone away there's nothing connected to the end of here, so the, the end of this inductor, because an inductor will try to keep the current through it the same, uh, and it will do whatever it can to, to make that possible by adjusting the voltage across itself, essentially by the magnetic field collapsing. Um, so this 
uh, end of the inductor will shoot negative. It always goes in the opposite direction that you were putting voltage in positive here. Uh, the output will start to go down and as soon as it hits ground, this back uh, backwards biased diode, which is called the flyback diode, this will be forward biased once this hits just a little bit below ground. And then current will f can flow through here into the load and basically that's, uh, that's the idea. This turns on and off, store, uh, charge gets stored and discharged and charged and discharged in and out of this inductor. These output filter capacitors basically do the opposite of the inductor. They try to keep the voltage across themselves the same. So as the current is going in and out of here, there's current also flowing in and out of these uh, capacitors to keep the voltage on this rail as, as stable as possible. And that's basically the operation. There's some other components here to keep things working correctly. Uh, this is the uh, the current limit shunt. So what happens here is the uh, voltage for this uh, FET goes through a very small resistor, it's 0.1 ohms. And when high currents are drawn through here, the, there's a voltage drop across this resistor, which is sensed by this pin. This pin basically measures the difference between the V-in pin, which is 15 volts, let's say, and the sense pin. Uh, and if it goes above a certain uh, voltage, which is, a, I think, 100 millivolts or something like that, then it will limit the output current by reducing the duty cycle on the output. So if you start to load this down more and more and more and more, once this exceeds the current limit that you've set by choosing a specific value of this resistor, then this will just fail to put more output uh, current into the, into the output. And so the effect of that uh, will be that the output voltage drops over a certain limit. So instead of just like f turning on and off or having some sort of uh, cutoff or something like that, basically it'll just start to dial down the voltage when it's, when it's overloaded or shorted out. Um, <clears throat> the inverting configuration is pretty much the same uh, with one main difference. Almost all the values are the same. Now in, in this case, particularly with this overcurrent limit, the, the value actually means something different in, in this setup. But basically it looks quite like the other, uh, system, uh, the other circuit up here, except this one's wired up differently. You'll notice that here, the output from this inductor is the actual output voltage, it's 12 volts. On this one, the output from this inductor is actually grounded. And that's because we want to basically invert the voltage. So if we ground this pin and all the other things are sort of doing what they're supposed to be doing, then instead uh, the ground pin and all the stuff that would have been grounded up here is actually connected to the negative 12 output and this will get pushed down to negative 12 volts if this is held at ground. All of the uh, other aspects are more or less the same. Um, there are more stresses in this circuit because the current flow is, a, is different. There's more current flowing through D3 here, this diode. Um, so you can't get as much output current in this setup, all other things being equal. Uh, you end up with about half an amp as the maximum output. Um, the efficiency is also lower. Um, but in the case of a synthesizer power supply, this is actually okay because normally you don't need as much negative output current as you do positive output current. And that's because most times modules contain LEDs and microcontrollers and other things like that and often those things are connected to the positive supply. Um, so without, with only a few exceptions, I think every module I've ever made has more positive supply requirement than negative supply requirements. And I think that's pretty much true for most modules. Um, so in a typical system, having one amp of, of positive output and half an amp of negative output is actually fine. Uh, and you can power quite a lot of modules with that. Uh, the only other part of the circuit is these output connectors here, which are basically just connected to the positive and negative 12 volt supply and the grounds. They're all bussed together. And then there's some other uh, pins which are not used. For the 5 volt pin, if you need to use 5 volts, you can use an external 5 volt adapter to plug into your bus. And then there's also a CV and gate bus, which we just connect together between all the, all the jacks. And that's pretty much it. 
even with full load, this uh, whole board is pretty efficient. Um, I think the overall efficiency is around 80 to 90 percent. Uh, the, the, the positive supply is efficiency is over 95 percent at full load and the negative supply efficiency is about 80 percent at full load. Uh, so even with everything um, fully maxed out, um, you can only feel a bit of heat coming off a few, uh, mostly these switching components and these diodes. And this, these inductors get a little bit warm, but other than that, it's, um, you know, nothing, nothing gets smoking hot or anything like that. And the input current is never more than uh, just a little bit more than one amp. So that's it. Thanks a lot for watching.